I was delighted to find this oasis of color here in the desert landscape of Santa Fe, New Mexico. You'd never know it to look at it from outside, but inside these adobe walls is a knockout garden created by artist James Havard. When you drive up to the house, you don't really see much. It's all hidden back here. It's a little oasis. It's, it's my private little, not a Zen garden, but it's, uh, it's pleasant. You can look over the fence, over the adobe wall over and see just exactly what it was like. I mean, it's barren sand and rock and a few pinyons and chamisa. And it was quite a challenge. James, you have this wonderful water feature right outside your back. It's, it must be the kitchen door or the... Well, the kitchen's just inside here, yeah. This is the summer kitchen now. Yeah. This is your summer kitchen garden. How appropriate. And all Some these good lettuces, lettuce. arugulas, all mixed lettuces. I plant them in two or three different times, so they're all summer. So you've got a progression of yeah. crops coming mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I've been eating the salads for a couple of weeks now. They're finally getting... This is all arugula I here. love arugula. Yeah. I could just eat arugula in my salad every day. In Santa Fe, how long will you, because your sun gets pretty intense and pretty hot. Well, no, it's, it's the sun's fine. It's just the first snow. The first snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you worry about here, which can happen in August. So you only have about three months. Three months. Yeah. And will all Tough this. Tough place to garden. Will all this keep producing for three months? Yeah, a lot of it will. Kale and broccoli and, and uh, fennel. And when you started the garden, was how did you come up with this layout? Because there's no grass here, which I approve this of. This was all grass when I moved here. I started here and moved all the way up the top. But first thing I did was take the grass out. That waste of water. A waste of water. <laughs> I had a friend that, from Mexico that helped me. We had to dig two feet of dirt out everywhere because the soil's not any good for growing things. And we put all new prepared it, you know, mixtures of back to earth and mushroom and manures and different things to make a good soil. You must have really wanted a garden. I did. <laughs> and it started off just this area, and now, as we'll see later, it goes on up. I finally put a fence around it so I could, adobe wall, so I could stop. <laughs> Couldn't do any more. You had to limit physically. yourself. <laughs> And I like the rose espaliered against a wall. That's Yeah, beautiful. that's an old one. That was there when I moved here. One of the few things that was here. And this is, the, your house, Is am I right? Is this typical of Santa Fe? Yeah. Because this is, is Adobe it style. Adobe? Yeah. And it really does suit the landscape. It does. It really works well. But what a surprise to come out here and see all this color. This is really where I have breakfast usually. And the old head up there, that's from uh, the Commodore Hotel in New York when they tore it down. That's it, wonderful. Those are old heads from buildings. The Italian carvers, when they came over, you know, did all the carving and buildings in New York. I was born in Galveston, Texas. I grew up on a, a working farm where we raised all our cattle and chickens, the whole thing. And, I was a member of the FFA, Future Farmers of America. The high school I attended was only, um, I think there was 40 students in my graduating class. And they didn't have art or anything, but I always was drawing at night and doing it. It's just something I did. And I started a college, I had an agricultural scholarship. But after a year of that, I saw other students in the art department wanted to change, and I went to the head of the art department and told him I was on a full scholarship and I was thinking of changing to art. And he tried his best to talk me out of it. <laughs> you know, you'll never make a living at that. But he did make a living at it, and a good one. James Havard has lived and worked in Europe. He had a studio in New York for many years before moving to Santa Fe. Now his paintings can be found all over the world. And most of the paintings are in um, private collections. I do have a lot in museums, too. Uh, the Metropolitan Museum has one, the Guggenheim, and the Smithsonian. James, you've got these wonderful aspens that are doing what they do, that magic thing with their yeah. leaves. It's fun to see the aspens next to the rose. This so is a rose called aspen. They do very well here. 
No. And they're continuous bloomers. They They'll bloom, bloom all summer mm -hmm. for you. Well, all summer for back. you. Yeah, all summer for me, three months. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the winter time? How do you have to treat your roses? Do you mulch them heavily? I mulch them, yeah. How much and you don't, mulch? You don't uh, trim them till the spring, usually. Just, I just pile, what I've been using is, a friend found is uh, husk from coconuts. Oh. You bought a dump truck load of it and you just pile it around them. Probably at least three and or four inches. And the ones against the house don't have to have it that much because of the wall. See, the adobe wall holds heat and that's the best place to plant a rose in Santa Fe is against a wall. They do better. They don't do that great out in the open. So you got the perfect microclimate. Yeah. And this one is um, has an, an adobe wall underneath, so maybe it gets right a little bit radiant mm -hmm. heat. So at how cold does it get here in the wintertime? Oh, uh, it can get down at night, you know, to, in the teens, 20s. But during the day, it's, you know, you can have a day in February, you can play golf. But the aspens are a native tree that are really, really yes. tough. They and are. You'll get that beautiful yellow golden mm -hmm. color in the autumn. Then you've got these beautiful exotic roses that do so well here in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, it's not just plants that make this Santa Fe garden so enchanting. And is it only by accident that we're reminded of another artist's garden? Like Santa Fe gardener James Havard, I find the beauty of the desert irresistible. But a long drought and an invasion of pine beetles is threatening the local pinyon pines, some of the desert's oldest trees. James is trying to save the ones in his garden. I guess I never thought I'd be standing under a pinyon pine for shade, but that's, you get a good bit of shade under this wonderfully gnarled Specimen. Yeah, they're quite This old. must have been here mm -hmm. when you started yeah, this the garden. Was here. All the pinyons work. This is, how old could this be? You know that at least 300 or what? Oh well, I've read that they're thousands of years yeah. old. Some of them. There's two or three up here. And this they is the tree. I didn't. You, this is where you get pine nuts from. Right. So they actually somewhere harvest these, but you don't. They do it here. The locals they lay sheets down under them, and, and it's a, quite a job to clean them out. But, very expensive little nuts, you know. It's what yeah. you put on your arugula salad. Well, you've got the arugula and the pine nuts. And the pine nuts. I don't have the white raisins, so. <laughs> <laughs> These are interesting. I don't know, they look like, they're. well, I know they're stone, but they... Yeah, they're hand-carved sort of... stone canales that, uh, from Mexico. Canales. You see canales on my house for the water to drain off the roof, oh. they're called. But in the old days, in Mexico, they carved them out of stone. Well, they're beautiful. They're beautiful objects, sculptural objects, yeah. And what a creative way to use them here in the garden. There's I was collecting them for a while. You can find them in town. Well, Both this pinion pine is just a wonderful specimen. It's like a sanctuary here around yeah. it. All gardens seem to be like an impressionistic painting, I guess. It's not Monet's garden, and I don't paint like Monet, though. So. It's different in that respect. My paintings are entirely different. Same spirit, but a different thing. This planting with all the colors mixing and mingling has a painterly feel. Yeah, it's similar to painting. You push paint around and you push soil around and something happens. Your garden has lots of different levels and terraces and it has such a lush feeling even when everything's not in full bloom. You've got all these flowers surrounding us and we're on this wonderful little path of gravel. Mm -hmm. This beautiful architectural sculpture artifact mm -hmm. that you've got right in the sort of the back of that bed there. This is an old piece from Mexico. And the colors mm -hmm. seem to go with the landscape here, the natural landscape. Yeah, it's all natural stone. It's car. just beautiful. And this looks like, this is a yarrow. Yarrows do really well here yeah, in Santa Fe. I guess those grays and the blue-greens mm -hmm. can take that, that intense heat that you yeah, get. Yeah, these are all, will be yellow. I think there's just a couple of blooming, but this whole, all this yarrow is yellow. Did you start Daisies, and there's a little of everything in here. This is just a It's really overplanted. I do that. On purpose. Things have to come up through to reach the sun. Uh-huh. Did you start yeah. things from plants or seeds? 
Uh, a lot of the I wildflower seeds a lot in the spring. I do that in the spring, and then most of them are from small plants originally. And all this growth has happened in one season, and this all this. Yeah, it comes back. It all has to be deadheaded, mm. and it comes back in the spring. And the bright, bright orange, this lichnus, lichnus. Lichnus, yeah. I think that's called the Mal Maltese cross lichnus chalcedonica. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> But it's yeah, that's, that's a, a good beautiful red, isn't it? Yeah, and that's a very hardy perennial. It's a cadmium red light. Cadmium red light. As now, an artist would say, color, yeah. And this planter right in the middle, that looks very primitive. It's an old Mexican. Um, they kept water in them. I think because you're an artist, it's the way that you use your artifacts in the garden so artfully. It's they just mm. look as if that's where they belong. Yeah, a lot of it I've had for years, like the gate and all that. And they're great pieces, so they'll work anywhere. Because I collect a lot of primitive things, too. And the poppies are just finishing. Yeah, they're just finishing. Oh, they're so beautiful. These and were all volunteer that came up from last year. And it's strange they came up on the outside of the beds. Mm -hmm. They reseeded wherever yeah, there was a good spot. Yeah, they were washed down. Yeah. That blue and orange mm -hmm. is so... It's like Monet. Yeah. <laughs> Walking into James Havard's garden is like discovering a bit of Europe. Next on A Gardener's Diary, find out how the architecture of a new potting shed adds another element to the atmosphere. I was charmed by the eclectic mix of flowers and artifacts in James Havard's garden in the arid hills above Santa Fe. Inside the house, his brooding sculptures have an air of mystery. Outside, his cheerful garden has a European ambiance that captures the sun-drenched colors of Provence and Tuscany. I uh, won a couple of scholarships, traveling scholarships to Europe. I think at that time it was $2,000 was the amount of your scholarship. And I stayed in Europe for four months on it. Ended up in Spain. Living above a bar, I had a little one-room studio. It was $12 a week, or maybe less. But I know you could go down after working in a studio in this little bar and get a tapa and a glass of wine for seven cents. Your garden has such a, an international or a European feel. I've never been to France or to Italy, but I feel as if I could be in any of those places in all the different areas with all the wonderful artifacts that you've placed in the terraces. Yeah, there's a lot of different countries represented here. <laughs> These are from Mexico. They had, the reason the little areas like that is uh, they had round water pots that wouldn't, so they made these to set them in to keep water cool, I guess. They're from Mexico. And that's from Germany, the little, the wash tub. I think it's a, ba a child's wash tub. You've traveled and lived in lots of different places. Yeah, quite a few. I've lived in France and Spain. So you've brought all those influences into your garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, we're in a different country. And to see aspens, which I know are a native tree, and sweet peas, you're training them up the tree, that is a lot. You have a good sense of humor, James. You have to have them go up something or make a trellis. Or, and all the little groupings of aspen trees are perfect spots for them. Well, everything is so happy and thriving here. And blues are a color that I really do have look a lot good of blues, in yeah. the southwestern sun, right. don't they? Mm -hmm. They hold up. There's something about that. But the nepetas or the catmints and the mm -hmm. salvias, they bloom for yeah. a long time. And they do very well here. They, all, they come back every year. So you rely on perennials heavily? Mostly. Well, it's just so beautiful and lush and it's hard to believe that you have such a short growing season everything looks so good yeah i wish it was longer <laughs> this looks like either a fancy schoolhouse or a, a, an old chapel it's an all adobe and these are old mesquite doors and which are from mexico is it a chapel yeah, well, it's built like one. It is a chapel, but it's also a tool shed. It's a potting shed, and it has and you ring Sunday morning bell. bell you can ring. Do you save that to ring for special occasions? Sometimes real late at night. <laughs> that... I think the neighbors appreciate it. <laughs> and what do you use it for? It's just full of all the equipment for the garden. Oh, a little it's a window with a great shed. view through there, sunning oh, wow. my mountain. 
And all the latillas were made from the fence that I had up here. Now, what's a latilla? Uh, the little herringbone uh, cedar strips, and you use them above the vigas. The vigas are the big, the uh, ones coming out. And what? it's all a moss rock floor. Beautiful. It looks like it's been here a long time. It does. What was your inspiration for building a chapel? Just always wanted one. I feel like you have a little compound if you've got a chapel. <laughs> and I'm thinking about getting buried in here, too. James, yeah. really? <laughs> right if back to the garden. you can do that anymore, yeah, <laughs> just stay here. <laughs> You'll be surrounded by this beautiful garden. Conserving water for Santa Fe Gardens often involves some ingenious ideas. Find out what James Havard came up with next on A Gardener's Diary. After hearing about the many challenges of gardening here in Santa Fe, I've got to give artist James Havard credit for keeping his plants so healthy. He has a well on his property, but it's not always reliable. Sometimes a little ingenuity comes in handy. I had a lot of trouble with my well. It goes out, it went out last year about this time for four or five days and almost lost the whole garden. A friend of mine has an ice company here and all the melted ice that turns into water. A guy started just collecting it and he would sell it to people that need it for gardens, like a thousand gallons. So I had him for three days come up here and every evening and do the whole garden with it. Quite expensive, but you know, it was water the guys, it was going to waste and he was very smart of him to do that. This is the only grass I've seen in your garden. That's it. That's it. And this wall with all these beautiful artifacts yeah. and these windows are great. Yeah, these are Indian, from East India, and uh, the door is Mesquite from Mexico. That's another Indian window over there, East Indian. It all just happened, like just, a painting. You know, well, that's not working, so you... So you do approach it somewhat like a painting? Yes. A so that's... Bit, a little bit, and not knowing what's going to happen is the exciting part of it. And lots of blue. This hardy geranium looks very happy here. They look here. right here, yeah. Yeah, and the salvia. So I didn't think of that before, but like you like your painting because you don't know what's going to happen, and you like the right, garden because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. What's this the most challenging part about gardening here in Santa Fe? Rain. Rain. But no you're rain. Trying to get some rain. <laughs> no, there's no rain, and the garden does so much better when it's rainwater. If it gets it once a month, it's great. You see them grow overnight. You've got ponds and this wonderful waterfall coming down into the pond and you've cited this at the highest it looks to me like the highest part of your garden yeah. we're really at the top you get a good view down to the house and that was that just something you thought it would make sense to have the water at the highest part well it was the only part left I, this was <laughs> it's the only part left there doesn't use a lot of water by the way it's it, a piece of grass this size would use more water than this does so it all it recirculates. To, yeah, and I tap it off, you know, once a week a little bit, but it's not that much water wasted. Well, the sound is so lovely. And well, that's to hear water running in New Mexico's a treat. I guess so. It's a little oasis here. Especially during a drought, it makes you feel yeah. cooler, even if it's it not. Does, yeah. And you've got portulaca or the moss rose and those right. pretty pots and that straw flower. Mm -hmm. This tamarack tree is is a pretty tree. You call it salt cedar? That's what they're called here. Yeah. Salt cedar. They make a lot of gates and things out of the branches. But as far as growing in the garden as an ornamental, you like it for the flowers. Right. And do you have to prune it back after it finishes flowering, or you just I leave it? I've cut, pruned some at the bottom, but none at the top, no. It bloomed twice last year. In the fall, well, it bloomed again, yeah. And it survives in your winter. Yeah. I like the pink soft clean. Yeah, it's like a smoke around it. I knew I might have a garden, but I didn't know I was getting so involved with it. It's almost like a disease. Between that and playing golf, I have a hard time getting in the studio. 